In this video, we are going to make a wreath, a fabulous wreath using one of our kits that we call a nine ribbon kit. In this type of kit, you get a sign, two bolts of mesh, a wreath base, and a bag of ribbon that will have nine different patterns of ribbon in it. All right, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is cut our mesh. Now you will cut both bolts of mesh into 10 inch pieces and cut the entire bolts. Now remember, when we make our wreaths, we are a stress-free zone. So don't worry about them being exactly 10 inches or making it a straight cut. 10-ish is perfect. And we're going to roll them so you won't even see the end. So don't worry about the fraying or the straightness, okay? We're just here to have fun. Now, if you're making the wreath with me, awesome. This is a great time to pause the video, get all of your mesh cut, and then we'll move on to the next step. Now that I have all of my mesh cut into 10 inch pieces and they kind of roll into little tubes, we are going to get our wreath base ready for us. So right now we're just working on the back bigger ring. I call it the back ring or the big ring. And then we have the small inner ring. Right now we're just gonna take the pine that are on the back ring and we're going to open them up and down so they kind of look like an alligator's mouth. And we do this now while our hands are available because we're gonna have mesh in our hands and it makes it a little trickier. So just go all the way around the back ring and open them just like that. Now what you're going to do is you're going to grab two pieces of one of your mesh and one piece of the other style of mesh. Now I know your mesh is different than mine and everything will be, but it doesn't really matter what ribbons or colors, all the technique is the same. So we have two of one color mesh and one piece of the other mesh. What we're gonna do is we're just going to help our mesh roll into loose tubes. You want them kind of big in the center. What we don't want is to go like this and make them really tight. We don't want that. The bigger the circle, the fuller your wreath will look. Now that being said, you will have some tubes that are already small because they were just closer in on the bolt. That is fine. It's okay that we have some. You just don't want to make them all this tight. Okay, so basically all you're doing is taking the cut edge and folding it over on itself maybe an inch or two. That's why it doesn't matter if you see the edges or they're straight or not because we're rolling them together. Now the part that has the seam, you're just gonna face down towards the table so we're not gonna see that. And I take the mesh, that's the same mesh, and I'm going to, with the seam, the cut edges facing downwards, you just make an X with those. Real easy like that. Then the other mesh, remember, go ahead and make it so your ends are even and it's a nice loose tube, as loose as it'll go. Now the other color mesh goes right up and down in the middle. My thumb holds sideways. I have the X and a mesh going exactly up and down. Now where my thumb is holding, I just kind of take my other thumb and I just kind of squeeze them together. See, we have a pretty little star thing happening. Now I'm going to go, and we opened those pine. I'm going to put my mesh right in the middle of the open pine. Now if you see, my mesh is going sideways like this. It's going with the curve of the wreath. We do not, do not want them going up and down this way, okay? So have them going sideways right in the middle of your pine. And then all you do is take your pine like that, pull it, once like across like that all right and then all you do is take them and twist them around themselves really simple don't overthink it the whole point is just to hold those mesh in place okay and by the time we're done you're gonna have so much practice we're gonna do the same thing right next to it the pine that are directly next to it but this time you're going to grab two of the mesh that you only grabbed one of so this time I will have two of my red and white mesh and one of my burlap ombre, okay? So remember what we're gonna, oh, and if it's a little fraying, you can just kind of cut or pull. Make a loose tube 
You want these edges to be flat. This part overlaps a couple inches. Remember, the tubes don't have to be the same size as each other. Look it. It's totally fine. Okay, so take the two mesh that are the same, make an X with them. Your other mesh, you make your nice little tube. Go straight up and down, okay? Pinch where your thumb was holding. Now where my thumb is holding, it goes straight into the pine that we opened up. I pull it across once, pretty nice and tight. And then all I do is one more twist around. Now do you see how our mesh is kind of hitting each other? That's exactly what we want. That creates a full wreath. If they were inward like this, you would have these huge gaps. So don't twist them that way. Remember, you want them going this way along the shape of your wreath. And that's basically it. What? There's so much wreath left. Okay, so we're gonna do those exact same steps all the way around the bottom. So I'm gonna go back to my first groupings where I had two of this mesh, make my tubes overlap. Loose tube, I'm overlapping, make your X, take the other mesh, nice loose tube. Remember the point of the tubes, these edges are flat and you're overlapping a couple inches, big circle. X, middle, kind of squish it all together. Now again, you're just going straight next to the pine that's there, all on the back ring. Pull, single twist. And then I kind of fluff them, making sure that, because when they get flattened like that, I just want to pull them so they're all going outwards towards the outer wreath. Okay, back to group two. Make your loose tubes. Star, squish. Pull and twist. And then back here, make sure nothing is flattening and they're all just kind of leaning against each other. All right. So that's what you're gonna do. Just alternate back and forth around the whole entire wreath.
All right, we have put in our last grouping and I know you did an amazing job. <laughs> so I just kind of go through, make sure nothing is flat, like being flattened. They're all puffed up coming towards the outer part of the wreath. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing on the top circle. So open your little pine up so they're good to go. Okay, so which grouping you start on really doesn't matter. Just pick two of one mesh and one of the other and then start alternating. It doesn't matter which two you pick. Do the same things. Continue your loose tubes. You know, a little fraying is okay, but you don't wanna constantly be pulling on the cut edge. That will create a lot of fray. So if there's a few little strings, just let them be because you'll actually make it worse if you keep pulling. So make your X exactly the same. Put it in any peg on top. Pull across and just one twist. Very important that you don't keep twisting these, okay? We need these to be long, at least on the top for this wreath. So just one single cross and a single twist and leave those open. Now you're gonna switch to your other combination. Take my X, put it directly next to the other one. Pull, single twist. Now this is a smaller ring, so they're gonna look even more full. You just wanna kind of place them around to make sure everything has its own little house. If you need to twist a little, that's fine. You just want them all to have their own home and not be laying on top of each other. Okay, continue all the way around the whole top circle.
We have all of our mesh in, yay! <laughs> okay, it's already looking beautiful, but there is so much more still to do. So what I'm gonna have you do is just push your gorgeous wreath over to the side and go ahead and get out your ribbons that are in their little bag. And as you unwrap them, if you haven't already, you will notice that you have three groupings. And if you have a little twine or string or ribbon, don't worry about that guy. Okay, in each grouping, you are going to have, let me show you, what's the easiest one? Three different patterns of ribbon. Each grouping, we've already put what we think looks good together. So if you don't wanna to have to think about it, just leave it as is. What you're going to do is unroll each of your ribbons and cut them into 12 inch pieces. Now, as you're cutting, make sure you keep your groupings together. So these three ribbons will stay together, these will stay together, and these will stay together, okay? Pause your video, go cut. Remember, it doesn't have to be straight, doesn't have to be exact. If one piece ends up a little shorter, a little longer, I promise it doesn't matter. Once it's all in your wreath, you will never, ever notice. Okay, stress-free zone, have fun. Once you have all of your ribbons cut into their 12 inch pieces, still in their groupings, you are going to open your fray check bottle, okay? If you haven't unwrapped it yet, go ahead and take it out of your container. And what we're going to do is very, very carefully, we are going to cut the tip. Now I'm gonna show you, when I first cut, it is really little, little cuts, like a tiny little sliver. You probably can't even see how much I'm cutting. And then you test it on your finger and see if you get a dew drop. And then you slice like a 16th of an inch again, and then do it, because all you need is this tiny, tiny dew drop worth of fray check coming out at one time, okay? So once you have your fray check, what it does, it seals the ends of your ribbons so they always look like fresh, clean cuts because no matter how nice the ribbon is or what kind of weave, it will all start to fray and look messy. So once you have your fray check, you are going to take the end of your ribbon. If you have a little piece that's coming out, I have a little frame. I'm just gonna cut it a little. Don't go crazy. Not every tiny little thread needs to be. It is ribbon, it's natural. You're gonna be great. So you take the little tiny dew drop and you just squeeze it on the edges of your ribbons like that, okay? Don't squeeze super hard. We don't need to saturate the whole ribbon. Just tiny little swipes like that. So that ribbon is a good one. This ribbon I have, and you might have some, it kind of shows it a little more. So just remember tiny little dabs and I just kind of dab, 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 dab. If something happens and like a big glob comes out, let it dry and then you can cut it down a little. But for most ribbons, you will never ever see the fray check, but your ribbons will always look great. So go ahead, take the time now to fray check all of your ribbons, leaving them in their groups as you go. Make sure you don't get them all mixed up. Now that you have all of your ribbons cut and everything's fray checked, time to bring the wreath back in. Now for this kit, we are just putting our ribbons in that top little circle, okay? And that's why we're going to need those pine again, these lovely pines. From a group, doesn't matter which group, just pick a group of ribbon. You are going to take one piece of each of the patterns. And just like we did with the mesh, you're going to make an X with two of them. Doesn't matter what two. And the other one goes right on top, just like the little stars we did, okay? Now, next time you make this grouping, the patterns can be in a different order, as long as it's always these three. You can put this one in back, you can switch a roo, or you can always leave it exactly the same. Okay, so we have our little star. I squish it just like I did before. Now, those pines that you did with your mesh, they have this open part right here. I am just going to lay my ribbon directly onto those pine and pull and twist them around again. Now, if you have longer pines, you can tuck them back so you don't see them. 
And then you take your ribbons and you fluff them out, meaning you touch each piece and kind of make it um, have this little curve to it. We don't want all the ribbon in one spot, right? Every ribbon is beautiful. You want to see it. And the more spread out they are, the more full your wreath looks. Now, everyone has a tendency to kind of push them into the center. The more out, the better, okay? So each little ribbon has its own cute little home. <laughs> okay, so we have those ribbons in. Go to your next grouping. Grab one of each pattern. Remember, make your X. One ribbon right on top. Squeeze it in the middle. Making sure the pattern side is up. Don't let it twist on you. You want to see all that. Going right to the pine that is next to it. If for some reason your pine uh, is too short, either you didn't twist it down long enough or your wreath just came a little short, you can untwist it while holding the mesh and then put it in and tie around. But usually they're long enough to do. And then I take the pines, kind of tuck them downwards like that. Go back to my ribbons, fluff each one. I mean, you can kind of put them where they are. Wonderful, we only use wired ribbon so you can really get it to shape. But just be careful if you pull edges too hard or this, it can break. But if you grab from the root and just kind of pull up, it creates an awesome fluff, making it really, really full. All right, go to your last grouping, one of each pattern. Gonna make your X about halfway in the ribbons. All right, in, over, twist, tuck, and fluff. Now we've used all three patterns, right? So easy peasy, we just start from the beginning again. Go back to your first grouping. One of each ribbon, make your X, one in the middle, find the next, twist and twist. Left. Make sure you can see all of them. Back to the second. And you're just going to continue this all the way around your wreath, going group one, two, three, one, two, three, like a waltz around your wreath.
my last group of ribbons. But as you see, I have one group over. Ah! Just kidding, no panic, stress-free zone, remember. <laughs> Most of you will have at least one group of ribbons left. This is the fun part, you can put it wherever you want. You can just go in and put it on top of any of the ribbon groupings that you want, that you think you love that pattern. Just twist it into your pine. If you don't wanna use them, you can use them on a different project. But this is kind of the nice things to have at the end to kind of fill in. A lot of wreaths have like a less full spot and you could always throw them in at the end. And if you have extra mesh, also the same thing. You're just gonna go in and put them in your wreath as once we're done to fill in any spots. Especially the mesh, you put it into the back rings just on top. You don't have to twist, just like we added the ribbon here. If you have extra mesh when you're done, you're gonna just put it in the back ring, a piece here and there, and just keep adding. More the better. All right, I'm gonna put my group of ribbon to the side. Now it's time to add the little decor. Whether you have a plush or a sign or a pick, before you do anything, you decide where you want your sign, like a lower corner, an upper corner, in the middle. You just kind of decide where you're gonna want it. Now, some signs have a long string. Some we gave you wire or twine to put on the back, and if you have um, a saw hook or a hook on the back, just put that twine or wire through it, twist it around, and we're just gonna use that to tie it right to the wreath. So for this one, I have this string and I am going to, I think I like this one right in the middle. Usually I'm an off to the side kind of girl, but I like this one right in the middle. So I kind of pull my ribbons to the side because I don't want to block them if I don't have to. And then I kind of pull them, you know, once we're done over to look like it. But for this one, I'm going to take this long twine and I just kind of pull it back to the back ring and I use some of the pine and I just twist that pine again. Remember, I love these wreaths because the pine does so much. But if you have a sign that has um, the sawtooth or whatever we said on it, right? You go through it and you have this wire. All you do is you take the wire and you're going to take the wire, kind of nuzzle it into your wreath, flip your wreath over Take your wires like this and put them around the metal part of the wreath like that. Okay, and then you're just gonna tie a couple knots. Check out your sign before it's permanent. See that you like it and then tie it nice and snug and you can cut off the extra wire or zip tie or ribbon or whatever it is you have. So once I have my sign tied in, I turn my wreath over and now I do the final kind of touches, the fluffing, which really is an important part of the wreath. So make sure it's not blocking anything, nothing's flattened. I like a little bit of ribbon coming over to make it look organic or like, you know, it's kind of part of it. Pull it around. And now you just get to play with it. And here's where if you have your extra mesh, you're gonna tie it in, put your ribbon in, or if you absolutely love it as it is, Call it quits because you did an amazing, amazing job. We have lots of styles of wreaths and all sorts of fun things to make. If you have any questions, you can always email us at designerdiyshop at gmail.com. Visit our website for more kits, shopdesignerdiy.com. Thank you so much. It was so fun crafting with you.